Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming and uh, visiting us with us today in this very uh, intimate talk regarding the heat all. Um, we are recording, so um, but you will be able to watch this later. We'll send you a link afterwards. But we're uh, joined today um, by uh, David Perez, who is an alumna of uh, alumnus of FSU. Um, he obtained his bachelor's degree in civil and environmental engineering from Florida State and a master's degree in environmental engineering from FAMU and is currently a fifth year PhD candidate at FAMU. Um, he began conducting research during his fresh, freshman summer at Tallahassee Community College and has continued uh, conducting research both domestically and abroad. Um, he's worked on wastewater treatment using algae um, sequestration. Did I get that right? There we go. Um, biofuel production uh, and use, biosand filtration for at home use, and tracking slash estimating chemical emissions at wastewater treatment plants, which is the focus of um, your current uh, dissertation research. Right? So, um, through his research projects and leadership roles throughout several student organizations, David has um, been able to articulate his commitment to environmental stewardship. Uh, to the U Udall Committee and became a recipient of their award in 2017. So we're very excited to have him back to speak about that. Um, he's currently uh, and very recently moved to Cincinnati, Ohio uh, with his wife and kids uh, to continue that PhD work and is working for the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, you have a long list of awards to share both at the graduate and undergraduate level for us, David. So I'm gonna let you go ahead and get into it. Um, you know, tell us about starting at FSU, um, when you started working with ONF, what awards were you applying for, what was really your focus during that time? Uh, um, yeah, sure. Um, I started at FSU, I transferred with my AA from, my AA from TCC, um, started in 2015, and I joined the, the Europe organization, the Undergraduate Research Opportunity Program. And through Europe, uh, working, uh, hanging around the HSF building, uh, I got I got in contact with ONF, and um, one of the big things that you see it around campus a lot the um, the two in every five FSU students make it abroad, and I was like, man, I want to be one of those students. So I I but I have no money, and I didn't want to take out loans. So I you know I try to find out you know if I can find an innovative way or you know like a, a smart way of getting abroad you know maybe through research or through or through a fellowship or through a scholarship. So through ONF, I got I applied for the Gilman. That was the first thing I applied for. Aside from the Europe, I applied for the Gilman. Worked with Emily um, Saris. I know that was the last name Saris. Um, she was she was like she knew her Gilman. Um, so when I applied with her, it was a great first experience. At ONF. Um, I got the I got the Gilman Award in 2016. I got to go to um, India for 100 days. I lost 60 pounds. I gained it right back, but I lost 60 pounds. Uh, did some great work over there, um, and uh, that was my first experience at ONF. And you know, having a good experience like that for off the bat uh, really set me up for the next three years. So I was there for three years at Florida State. So next three years, I applied for um, the Gilman. I applied for um, I applied for the Idea Grant. I think they changed the name of it, but the Idea Grant. I applied for the Europe. I'm not sorry, Europe, um, Udall. Um, and several other scholarships. I applied for several scholarships, um, and I always went to ONF for help with writing my applications. Um, I see Jesse or I see um, Josh Tanik, like uh, maybe like ten times before I submitted an application. Um, so I got really comfortable with uh, people reading my my work or my my letters or my um, my personal statements. Um, but, but yeah, and then just uh, there for three years. Started off with the Gilman, great experience. So I, I kept coming back uh, for help. I think it was instrumental, you know, in getting uh, the Gilman and the Udall and several other awards I was able to receive. So thank you, Ona. Appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> um, when you were first coming into FSU, how did you? I mean, obviously you were doing research at TCC, but how did you decide on your major? You know, how did you decide what passions you really wanted to follow, um, both in the classroom and outside of the classroom? Um, uh, maybe think about a while back. Um, uh, when um, when I when I was uh, I think like in um elementary school, middle school, uh, I saw the Inconvenient Truth with Al Gore, and um, 
made you feel real guilty about you know you see well not guilty but you saw like the world was you know changing the climate change and so much stuff was happening and they said in a couple of years Miami would be under underwater and I lived in Miami. Um and I always thought like you know growing are so ridiculous like, how can I not figure this out? So I thought I could you know try to be a try to be a uh, you know an agent of change. So I went into environmental engineering from the jump. Um, I focused mainly on you know environmental uh, topics, environmental research, uh, environmental studies. So th that was my that was what I what I used going into it. And um, yeah, I, I liked it. I, I liked understanding more about our environment, like understanding the laws, and discovering you know what we can and cannot do. You know, pinpointing what what's really the issue. You know, sometimes things get blown out of proportion, but there's you know you, you can pinpoint you know where some of this pollution is coming from. Um, I always thought that the EPA was a uh, was a was a great place to work, or would, would be a great place to work uh, to be an agent of change. You know, um, I feel like you can make your biggest impact working from the regulation standpoint or assisting with regulation. So I, I had that as my goal when I started at TCC, and um, I wrote that in my first personal statement my freshman year, and I kept that until I got to grad school. Uh, I just read a couple of my personal statements, so I had that in there uh, when I when I applied to the EPA. I brought that up. I said, I've been talking about this for almost a decade. You know, uh, this is where I want to be. So from, from the beginning, I knew where I wanted to work. And I felt like I had to, you know, um, I was able, I, I needed to, you know, pad my, not pattern resume, but, you know, make sure I showed there was a, there was a commitment, uh, what, what you'd all call a commitment to environmental stewardship, you know, in my background. So that's what I focus on uh, from the beginning. That, that answers your question. What else would you ask? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, so obviously, this idea of the agent of change and environmental stewardship uh, obviously plays with the idea of with the mission statement for the UDAL. Um, do you remember when you? I I know it's thinking back quite a ways, but do you remember like when you first heard about the award or what attracted you to the award? You know, I mean, obviously there's a financial component, but were there other parts of it that were of interest to you when you were applying? Um, well, yeah, I, I'm what, I'm what you call a, like a, what's the word, a non, like FSU has a word for it, like non, non-traditional student. I was like 22 when I started at TCC, 24, I think at Florida State, I was a transfer student. So that, that's considered like non-traditional. Um, and when I won the Gilman, it gave me a little bit of confidence, you know, that I, I can qualify for these national, um, scholarships. Then when Udall came out, um, I heard about it. They said that only like 50 students in the nation get it. So I, off bat, you know, it's a very competitive application. Um, so it was more of a challenge. I wanted to challenge myself. I almost didn't apply for it because my my daughter, my 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 wife was my girlfriend at the time was pregnant. You know that that um, the like four months leading up to it, um, and I almost I I wasn't going to apply for it at all. Actually, I, I it was somebody from um, ONF conference that I went to. Um, I was speaking with him and he asked me what I wanted to apply for. And I was, he, he, he kept like coming back to the conversation. I told him, I was thinking about you all, but I said, I'm not going to do it. And he asked me why not. And I said, uh, oh, cause I have a kid on the way. And you know, most people would be like, oh yeah, yeah. You know, I get it. You know, he was like, okay. And, and I'm like, it was weird. It's, it, I, I bring it up because if someone else can believe in you, how can you not believe in yourself? And he didn't even know me. So it's, that small interaction was like, gave me enough confidence. So, um, I contacted, so after like after thinking about it for months um, and not letting you know my daughter being born like stop that my your life doesn't stop having kids when you have kids. Um, I spoke with I reached out to Jesse and Josh, um, January twenty seventh, so like a week from now, six years six years ago, um, and the application due in March, so like a month before, and I got in contact and um and it, and you want to contact someone from ONF because ONF goes to the. Uh, they have like workshops where the you all people come and talk to you know ONF offices around the country and they let them know what they're looking for. So when I got there, I got a better sense of what I needed to do. And for uh, about yeah, about five weeks, we worked on my application and you know we polished out something that was accepted. Yeah, so you talk about the application process, and that's sort of the sweet spot, right? Is like trying to meet students about that month out so that we can really our office can work with them as much as possible. Um, going through that process, can you think about like maybe skill, obviously you had gone through it with Gilman, but skills that you picked up while going through these application processes, like 
maybe some challenges or um, you sort of touched on maybe some of the fears that you experienced while going through, but um, can you speak a little more to that? Yeah, so first off with fears, um, you got to get over letting people read your, I don't think I'm a great writer in any, any uh, capacity. So you have to get used to people like reading your words. Um, that's cool. Probably all, you got, there's an office that people like read you, read yourself for free and criticize it like in a loving way, you know. Justine Joss never like said, this is crap. They're like, oh, this is, this is really good. Maybe work on this, you know. So uh, getting over that fear um, of someone, I think that's the first part, getting, writing something and having someone read it. Because we're so used to turning in papers and classes, has to be finished before we turn it in. We can make drafts, drafts are okay. Um, so that's, that's, that was the fear of like letting someone read. Like I got over that pretty quickly, but that's the fear a lot of people have. Um, and like skills, uh, once, uh, once skills, um, making it a priority, like starting a month out, if you've had a month to study for a test or to get prepared for a paper, like you can probably knock it out of the park. But if you do it like the day before, week before, uh, it's not going to be, it's not going to be a really good paper or, or you're not going to be ready for a test. I like to, th I like to think of it as like, like, on, like say 100% of, of, of the applications come in to the UDAW. I'm saying maybe 20%, you know, did, you know, did it the week before. So it's not like 20% and then maybe another 15, 20% didn't have like correct letters recommendations. So maybe like 60% of that pool is actually like complete out. That's how I think about it at least. I, I, there, people do like last minute stuff. So if you, now you're, you're really working with 60% of the population in that, in, that, in that applicant pool. I think that's, that's do better, much better odds than what you consider from the beginning. But as long as you complete your application, you know, there's that. Um, so then you're, you're, in a, you're in a good spot. Um, and the last thing, uh, forget, I'm not, I'm, Jesse, this is, you said it. I want to say Josh said it, but I'm not sure you said it. Um, when I was writing my application, one, I forget which one, one of you asked me, is it for the GRP for this? But something I learned from ONF, I care with me the rest of my life. Um, I was trying to write something and one of you asked like, what are you trying to say? And I said, you know, I'm trying to impress them. I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know what to say because I'm trying to impress these people that are reading my application. And they told me, stop, don't try that. Like authenticity is much easier to articulate. So if, if you articulate, you know, you know, your authentic self, it comes off a lot smoother and a lot easier than you trying to impress them, you know, trying to build up a story that it really isn't what it is. And I've used that, like, to this day, all my applications come out straight authentic and um, it's been successful. So that's, that's something to consider. Be authentic, uh, authenticity, um, authenticity, like, reads a lot better. Um, make it a priority and don't, don't be scared of letting other people read your, uh, your work. Yeah, I think having to get that um, uh, feel authentic and not like you're trying to just you know sell yourself in a way that's going to impress someone. Yeah, it's like you're trying to like sell it. Yeah, like I, I built a bridge, you know, using like three sticks, and everyone drove. Like, no, like uh, it's easier to like I said, yeah, it's easier to read when you're, when you're authentic and easier to write too because you're not thinking of the word; they just come out. Yeah. Um. So. I mean, obviously, the UDAL has uh, that component that's very environmentally impacted. Um, that's where you were writing your application from. Can you talk a little bit about how, you know, receiving that award impacted your post undergrad plans or or your career pathway? Um, well, I, I was committed to like, like an, what the, what UDAL calls environmental stewardship. Um, UDAL actually. Udall is uh, like part, it's part of the government. Um, Morris and Stuart Udall were, um, I think Morris was a vice president, no, not a vice president, but um, the person under the vice president, I forget the name. But, um, and his brother, the, both of them held like really high cabinet seats. They're both brothers and they're, they're very impressive brothers. And um, uh, Stuart Udall would be a lot more important to the, they're both very important to the 1970s um, environmental revolution that came out. Um, there were just other people that had like higher, like bigger names and bigger um, contributions, but they, they were huge in that in that field. Um, the Clean Water Act, the Clean Air Act, stuff like that, is based off stuff that they did, and they work with the Kennedys. They're big people in that. So, um, you know, me going to the EPA or, to, or going towards regulation, um, uh, to, to like federal work, you know, um, sorry. Uh, I think that maybe would been the biggest. Uh, the biggest impact the UDAL application had on me because I got to meet people because when you get to, when you get to UDAL that you meet these people that are working with the government and you see what their impacts are and you see what they do and how they get people together so uh yeah I think that's one of the biggest things and another, another thing was um I didn't reckon like 
I think it's lost some a bit, but it's there's a huge native population in the country, and a lot of the native, a lot of the Utah, uh, a lot of Utah um, applicants are, are are have some kind of native lineage lineage in this country, and you and you notice, and when you get there, that that's what they talk about a lot. That they want to tell you about their lineage and and how big their tribe is at home and the problems they have and something that you know I've never even seen before, even heard of, and you know, it, it comes out in full light there because you become a minority uh, when you come to like a Utah uh, like conference. There, there's a lot of natives there and you get to hear, you know, um, what, what the Utahs have done for the native population and how they've affected this country, uh, the, the native population. So um, yeah, impact big native population. And, um, and I think that's something unique about Florida State. Uh, we, we have a partnership with a native, uh, with a, with a native tribe, or at least some subset of the Seminole tribe if you can include that in your application, I don't know how you can, if you, if you really have like an authentic, you know, feel for that. And, um, and an opinion on that, something you could bring to the table. I think it's something unique about Florida state because we have one of, of like, a, I don't think many places have that kind of relationship with the, with the seminal, like with the native tribe. So something to consider. Yeah. So having worked with ONF um, a few times years, um, are, is there anything that you would have done differently or uh, throughout that process or any tips or advice that you would consider um, giving to students that are thinking about working with our office or uh, applying for a fellowship? Um, I think it worked for me. I, I, I don't think it's, it was ever an issue. Uh, to maybe, maybe I think building a relationship with ONF is important. Um, the earlier you get a relationship, the, the more comfortable you are coming to them. And, you know, the, the earlier you, you become part of it, the earlier you get to, like, learn about all these different types of applications. Because the worst feeling is to find out there's something that, like, is perfect for you. And, you're, like, it, the deadline passed, like, a week ago or a month ago. There's nothing worse than that. So uh, starting a relationship early, uh, I don't think it's ever been – ONF has always been very, like, friendly. Um, I'm not sure if, if, if Dr. Falar is still there. Yeah, he is. Uh, well, he, he's he's great. You know, he's very inviting. I've never seen anyone like get to, like sent from his door. So, um, I think making that making that connection early, so then you become comfortable and you get to ask those questions, and they might keep you in mind if they know who you are. They will keep you in mind when something's about to come up. Um, because there's there's more. There's also the, there's a there's a the, the Barry Goldwater uh, application. I think is something similar to Utah. And I'm like, why did I never hear that? I would apply for that like any day. And there's the truth. And when I got to um, Utah, there was like so many other applications scholarships like I didn't hear about any of these before so the earlier you make that connection you become comfortable with ONF you know they'll keep you in mind and you get to you know speak with them freely and you know a lot sooner than later because you're only there for like three or four years right so it goes by pretty quickly and some things you can only apply for as a junior the sophomore the senior yeah that's what I would say I'm glad you mentioned Goldwater because my subtle plug is uh, I took over that role from Emily when she left the office, and so that's one of the awards that I that I recruit for. But yeah, it's such a small window; like you, it's your second or your third year, and that's it. Um, yep. but, but yeah, um, I did have a quick question um, about the because with the Udall scholarship, like obviously the financial incentive is important. You know, it's very. I mean, there's a lot of value to that when it comes to paying those like books, tuition, and fees, and all of that. Um, but you also, I believe it's that, that is a, that week long conference in Arizona, um, that you, that they fly you out to. Can, can you talk a little bit more about like what you experienced there? Like you mentioned that you, um, met a lot of people from, uh, tribes across the United States, you know, but was it more like workshops or just networking or, or what did that look like? Oh yeah. I, I honestly, I wasn't prepared for it. Um, I, I don't want to harp, it, it's, it's intense. The, uh, the conference is intense and, you know, just, I don't, I don't think anyone was able to speak on that while I was applying. So if I can do that, sure. So what, uh, what happens is all 50, um, the 50 uh, uh, award winners um, meet in Tucson, Arizona for five days, in a really nice hotel. Tucson's an interesting uh, city. Um, I've never been to the desert before, so it's nice. Um, it's in the summer, so it's really hot. Um, and you meet these, like, everyone there is super, super, uh, impressive everyone's impressive there uh and what you do there is you you you, you if i was smart i would have networked a lot better when i got there I, I was unsure you know you're around all these like really impressive people um they've won every award you can think of um and they, they all they, and i was an environmental engineer and i was the only environmental engineer there a lot of people there were for like public policy um 
public policy, uh, native policy, health, like health, uh, health uh, degrees, um, like pre nursing. Um, uh, so, yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a wide spectrum of people there. A lot, a lot of them from native, um, native populations. And what they got us to do is they separated us into like different like uh, groups, and we had to um, we had to come together and 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 hash out in like a very complicated water rights situation. And we all became like different shareholders in different um, like groups. Like I, I was part of the salmon the salmon uh, growers coalition. Uh, one one group was part of a native population that had water rights for like the past like two centuries. Another one was like um, people who wanted to uh, what's the word develop the land that was nearby there, and they all were drawing off this one like um, water stream, this one like waterway in California, and um, you know, whereas at the top you know has to dictate what gets goes downstream, and so we had to like we had to come up with a solution to that problem, but everyone had their own interest, and it was very interesting because you know. You, 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 there's one thing like trying to be logical about, about it, but, but you know, but, uh, the native population, like they had like a native group and they took it like really personal and they didn't want, like they had all the rights. They didn't have to give anybody water. So like, why are we giving anyone water? We're like, cause we need it for development or we need it for this, like, we don't care. And then they bring up, you know, like the whole like years and years of tyranny against I'm like, how do you argue that, you know? So it was very interesting, like the dynamic. And, um, and that's what we did for five days. We hashed out a plan you know, you get 20%, you get this, and then you make concessions for this. And it was like a policy, it was like a politics thing. It was really interesting. Um, and we got to uh, hear from the Udall's ancestors and um, and uh, like, uh, the, like the Udall's sister, like there was Morrison Stewart, but they had a sister, she, she was a spy during World War II. Um, their, their, their daughter works, uh, she's, she has like a, a spot with the government now. She worked with the Obamas back then. Uh, so it was very interesting, it was very interesting. Uh, um, conference um and i think if you went there and network better i i, if I network better would have been a lot better off but uh i said it was it went by pretty quickly but that's yeah that's what we did we uh we like worked we hashed out a water issue and it was like a a big boardroom with a long table and like 40 people were sitting down and they're hashing it out some were screaming uh some take it really personal um it was very interesting very interesting and at the end if we didn't come up with a solution then the directors came up with a solution whether we liked it or not. And that's kind of how the world world works, right? Yeah, I'm long-winded, but yeah. No, that's good. I had no idea how they structured that other than, you know, sort of a week long networking event. But to hear that it's like, no, you have all of these people that are very capable coming from very different backgrounds. So figure it out. <laughs> this is how the oh, world- yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. And then, like I said, they bring very, very unique perspectives to the situation. You never would have thought of like, oh, so you, you kind of tread lightly, you know? But yeah. 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 Well, Justin, do you have any other questions? Yeah, and because you were talking earlier um, about that, you know, that you kind of had this feeling since since you were younger, yeah, you know, since you watched uh, oh, that I'm outdoor sorry. documentary Something that happened. you did. I can't hear you. Oh, you can't hear me? Um, let's see. Um, me i can i can hear you okay um i can't hear you okay i hear you now oh wait you're good okay um what i was saying uh it sounds it sounds like that from a young age you had this established interest in the environment and in conservation um but going into that udall conference and i guess that that was your third year um, uh, or I guess your second year at Florida State, if I remember correctly, um, oh, yeah. did did that like change how you were going to kind of proceed like into your senior year, like what anything that you were going to focus on, or or did it just like reaffirm that yes, I'm studying exactly what I should be, and this is the path that I want to go on, or I guess did it tweak your goals at all, if that makes sense? No, um, no, I get you. Um... The more we affirm than anything, it also gives you confidence, you know. Uh, it, it is a big deal to win the Udo. And kind of like, like, like I, I remember my email, I couldn't believe that I got it. Um, so it's a big deal. It reaffirmed, you know, that you know, I was at the right place, I was on the right track. Um, it, sh it shouldn't, like, give you a justification for what you're doing. It should, you know, it should be, like, internal, like, ideally, but it like, justifies your work, you know, hard work pays off. So I reaffirmed more than anything, and it did, put, like, 
I didn't want to work. In, I didn't know if I wanted to work in federal, you know, work or in industry or academia. And it kind of like pushed me towards the federal route. So, um, yeah, re reaffirming and also, you know, kind of pushing towards the, the federal route. But it wasn't because of the day pushed me. It's just from what I saw. It wasn't no, no one there was like, you know, and, and you're surrounded by great people. So, like, it, it, it excites you for what the future holds, you know. There's just some bright people out there. I think uh, we have a couple more questions that we are happy to ask at any moment, but um, Bonnie, did you, uh, we would love to hear from uh, any of our students in attendance if you have questions uh, for David about his time abroad, his research, the Udall scholarship specifically, um, anything like that. Please feel free to um, unmute yourself and ask, or if you'd rather put it in the chat, that's fine too. Yeah, I'm, I'm here for you guys. So need any help, let me know. Um, is there like any other part of the application besides the essay that you found was challenging or? Um, yeah, I, I guess that's a good question. Um, so the, the, the first couple parts, um, you know, most applications make you put everything together. You know, your leadership qualities, your um, your um, your contribution to the community, um, and your personal statement. Like they usually like separate those. But this one, I mean, we keep it together like one long essay. But this one, um, they, they like separate that, right? So I think that was hard because you might have like, because my my personal statement, I might have like five paragraphs, you know, about me or about what I've done. One paragraph like leadership, and like two paragraphs for like community um, involvement. And then when you have to apply, you're like, damn. Yeah, Darn, uh, there's like I'm, I'm. I feel like I'm missing pieces. So that that was hard. That was a bit difficult. I think uh, it's like trying to make a well-rounded essay. You want to make sure you, you like not you like address each of their questions. You know, like um, that's what I'm looking for. Comprehensively, like you know, like with some, with so I think that was challenging. The um, the essay itself it changed from when I wrote it. When I wrote it, they wanted to know. They wanted me to review a piece of writing. That either the brothers had written and then give my opinion on that writing. So it could have been like policy they've written or an essay they've written. I, I used a book that Stuart Udall wrote uh, back in the 1970s. Um, but um, I think the essay now is you have to look at one of the, the, the three core values and you have to say what, what it means to you. Um, I, uh, I think the, the essay part is, is, is you can write it any way you want. So it's, I think that one's challenging. And you're, you're trying to like, I would say try to be. Um, as like innovative, you kind of like try to be uh that's what I'm looking for. Try to be like, you, like as unique as possible for that essay part because these the people read it, they read a bunch of them. Um, I remember when I when I wrote my 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 essay, my the last part of the, of the Utah um, application, uh, when I had to look at a piece of writing, I, I chose the book, right? The book's like 200 pages. You know, some people might write like a 50 page essay, or you know, like I, I like I took it pretty serious and um when I got there, the director, the, the guy who like reads them, the director of the UDAW, and the guy, he reads the application too. He like put me to the side today. That was really, I, I thought that was impressive. I, I like what you did. So try to be unique in your application. Uh, this is their reading and they want to read something like new, something refreshing. So uh, I, I would say try to, uh, I'm not sure if, how you would maybe like ONF help you with that, but if, yeah, I'd say be innovative or be unique in your, uh, in your, in your application. The last part, the first part is be authentic. And I come around. Uh, your major, by the way, I'm sorry. Well, what's your major? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, I'm anthropology and sociology. Um, so what I would want to do with that is I'm doing underwater archaeology. Um, right now, my research is the Appalachian here in Tallahassee. Um, so I was just gonna. I kind of want to shift towards um how like. So there's this one. Sorry, it's. Kind of complicated because I know it's hard to connect, but um, there's this one professor, Dr. Halligan, and she does research on like, you know, human how sites got preserved by rising sea levels after the ice age. Um, mm -hmm. so and from that, like, there's a lot you can learn about, like, you know, how these pre ice age civilizations were functioning, and then after, like, how that's all changed. So um, I was gonna try and you know, 
what I'm trying to do is shift to my research to a policy standpoint and see how like our understanding of the past and how like people might have changed should influence our policy. So, um, you know, you mentioned water policy, so that would probably be a part of it. I know migration policy would probably be a big part of it because a lot of people obviously had to migrate away during uh, the last big climate event. Um, and with this one being more rapid, you know, I feel like it just might be more pertinent to see how um, the understanding of the past should shape how we go about things now. Yeah, I, I would I would open that the first, the first uh, sentence of your application of this ad, the last sentence you just said I, I think open with that as like a start a starter. Uh, water rights was a big thing. That's what we talked about. You know, water rights is huge. I, I can see where you can um, you can tie that into your yeah, that, I can see a really good way you can tie that into your application. But you're talking about like you know previous uh, peoples. I'm not sure uh, you said I'm not sure what, what they were here in Apalachicola, is it or not in other places, right? It's the Appalachian. Uh, yeah. And Appalachia has its own problems too, right? You can you can go like past and present. Appalachicola ha has water right issue, water rights issues too, you know, with Georgia and, and um Georgia and uh Alabama and Florida, like you know, the, the whole like Atlanta like holds a lot of uh I think it affects Appalachicola, right? I wanna say it does. But you, there, there's like water rights issues there too. Um I think if you, you incorporate your research into what you know and you 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 show you have a um, a commitment to, uh, like I said, environmental stewardship, and you can, if you bring up, you know, past peoples, you know, how how your research can uh, affect or can assist in, like, um, uh, you know, policy or uh, or how your 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 data can, you know, help, you know, get a full picture of the problem um, or what you've seen in the past, your view. Um, I, yeah, there's there's so many ways you can you can put that, and I think you have a great. I, I'm I'm excited for you. I think there's a lot of ways you can go about that. You have about six or seven weeks, right, before the application's due. Um, we have a campus deadline of February 8th, and that's just to let us know, like, hey, if you're interested, start working with our office now, and then it's okay, okay. in March um, to the national national committee. So, um, yeah, if you're if you're interested, definitely come and talk to us um, so we can make sure you get into the system and, and uh, we can work through the application with you. Because it is a lot of like little parts. It's like 300 words, and you got to make it good about you know your leadership experience or or your commitment to non uh, like non academic research. So um, lots of little moving parts. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, you can't apply unless you go through on that, correct? Yes, you have to go through the university rep. So, and I think now is an interesting time because we're so used to being online. We can you can make these connections online if you need to. You don't, God forbid, you don't want to walk to you know the most beautiful building in at Florida State, but you, know, you can make this connection. I think online. Yeah, that, I'm excited yeah. for you. Uh, that's a, that's a, I think you have a strong you have a, a strong like you know path to, to your application, Mr. Azarito. Azarito. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, that project sounds cool as hell, uh, to be frank. So, um, but uh, David, I just had a quick question. Um, the because a, a lot more fellowships. Uh, well, I don't want to say a lot more; it's subjective. But a few more fellowships in recent years have been shifting towards um, more alumni engagement of their fellowships. Like some have created specific, like like ambassadorial like roles for alumni to help better recruit. Um, but I, I guess what is there anything available for Udall alumni? Do they stay in touch with you? Do you like review applications or um yeah, yeah. so um no I'm with you. Uh I, the, the hearing that I'm I mean to cut you off just hit me like we have a listserv. Like remember I I, I was like I was like, I was a minority. I've never I have a minority period but I was minority there, man. So I'm the only like environmental student. Like uh, when we had the water rights uh, problem, I didn't know how I could help until like I brought in like you know there's there's a there's a way to um, to uh, to uh, to measure the amount of uh, amount of site in the water's called turbidity. Like, and there's a way we uh, we use NTU units. So I brought that into it, and that was my one contribution to the whole thing. So so I had a science, but everyone that was like policy and everyone was, like anthropology majors, everyone had like you know more social sciences uh, background. So I, I, I didn't network as much as I should have. However, since you have that big pot of people, they have a listserv of like two, like over like a thousand people on it from like Udall and Udall recipients and people that work with Udall. 
and they send out like every single day, like 10 times, more than 10 times a day, uh, like job openings around the country. Or if they're in different parts of the, of the country, they say, hey, is anyone in the city? Like, let's link up. Uh, so it's like a really close-knit community. Um, but like, the, the, I think the job portion was big. Like the, the alumni um, listserv, they put up like, you know, positions at universities, research opportunities, uh, research openings at the university for like a graduate degree, um, job openings like at National Forest. Like these, these people are everywhere. So like, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's big to be a Utah person. So like if you get in there, like the alumni like bring, like they, they're, they're posting up stuff all the time. It never pertained to me because like I said, I was in like more, you know, environmental sciences, but like uh, a lot of the job offers are really cool. And I wish I could have applied for some of them because they were like really impressive. Um, you know, a director of, you know, some department in environmental or native uh, studies, like like director of the whole like thing, like they're looking for Utah uh, students or pre previous Utah winners who've graduated to come there. So uh, yeah, it was really, really nice. Really, really, uh, they, they really look out for their alumni. But, uh, that's really cool to hear you say because because um, sometimes students will, uh, at least from, from my experience, will fixate so much on the opportunity at hand that you, you don't really think of like, okay, so what if this happens, um, then what are those like long-term benefits? Um, so that's really cool to hear that they are at least like, you know, throwing these opportunities at you um, because some of those federally, fed, sorry, federally funded awards, um, you, you gain that like non-competitive status when you're applying to any job, like with the government. Um, I don't know if that's associated with UDAL, but for a few of the other fellowships that we do work with, uh, that's the case. So it makes it a little bit easier to obtain those positions. But. I'm going to bring it up. So uh, I'm, 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 I'm a, I'm a fellow with the EP. I'm not an employee yet. So when I apply for employment, I'm going to bring it up. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Any other questions yeah. from uh, our students in attendance? Um, or I'm sure Bonnie and I uh, will just have plenty of questions for David. Well, and I'm happy to send around. Um, we will, as I mentioned earlier, we're recording. So I'll be sending the link once we upload this to YouTube, but um, I'll also send around the sample application. So if you are thinking about applying, you can see sort of the breakdown of um, different essays and topics that you'll need, you would need to speak on. Mr. Miller, if you're, if you're there, what's your major, if you don't mind me asking? I'm an international affairs major for now. Okay, nice. I have a twin who went to Florida State. He got his master's in international affairs. Oh man, I, I don't know if I can stay in international affairs. I've been trying to change it to uh, environmental science because that's what I like. Okay, okay. And now, now, quite now, here's a question I ask people: Do you want to like work on the research, or you want to work on the application? I want to do the science like, or the application. That's the question. I didn't know about this scholarship until like yesterday, so I would say research. But this scholarship would be nice, but I don't know if like. I could get it, you know. I mean, the, the fact you have an interest in environmental science is, is, is that's the first step, right? But I mean, as far as you like switching, aside from you, doll, like, because when I came in, I, I thought I was doing environmental science, but I ended up doing environmental engineering. So I just, I just want to make sure you understood like the, the difference. Do you want to do the science or the application? You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I understand. I, was, I think I want to do the science side. Okay, so the science, that's environmental science, you know? But if you want to like apply it to like real world issues and you do out engineering, that's the difference between an engineer and a scientist. I, I, I learned that when I graduated, sadly. The engineer applies it and the scientist, you know, like research it and, and you know conducts the science. Uh it's like chicken and egg thing, you know, or like egg and then a chicken. Uh, does that make sense? Um but yeah, um I, I didn't start my application for you until the 30th of uh I I I contacted on after 30th of January 2017. Yeah, the end, the end of this month, so like 11 days from now, two years ago, and I had to, and I did it within 30 days. I think 30 days is a good time. I think you're still way ahead of the ball. You know, um, if you want, if you want to apply for this yourself, you have a bunch of time. You know, if you need help, you know, figuring out how you can tie your your past experiences in, um, you want to have I'd be happy to help you. Um, you know, apply for that, or or, or like produce a competitive application. I'm here if you have any questions.
you know, the nice thing about a lot of these fellowship applications you'd all included is almost all the fellowships that we're working with ask you very similar questions. You know, the who are you? What do you want to do? Why do you need this fellowship to get there? Um, and if you can answer that question for a Udall application, you can answer that question for a Gilman application, you can answer that question for a Fulbright application, you can answer that for a McKnight, a Ford, you know, any of these other fellowships. Um, and so with that repetition, with that practice, you start to just get like really prepared for not just like uh, like written interviews, I guess, which is what these applications are, but those verbal interviews when people are asking you these questions, you know, it, it, it really helps in that real world application. But, I've been using the same. Um, I, 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 um, I have a sense from my first statement, it goes whether it be consulting, researching, or implementing government regulations, I would like to make my greatest contributions to environmental conservation as a doctoral engineer. I, I, I've used that sentence for like 30 applications. And then the paragraph that follows it, I've used that for like 30 applications. I've, I've, I've also, um, uh, recycled it. I recycled it several times. So once, you, once, you, once you write one application, you kind of write all of them, you try to tweak them over and over to fit. But I hope that's a like, takeaway from all the work you did, did with me, Jesse. But you know, it's the same application over and over. I just have to fit. It's a youth all fit. It's a Ignite. Fit it's a Ford. Fit it's a GRFP. Fit it's a Gilman. Fit it to. Yeah, I, I, I applied to a lot of stuff. Yeah, David, didn't you have to like decline a fellowship because you couldn't accept it alongside another fellowship? You know, so I think you've mastered the game. If I can uh, just brag on you for a minute. Yeah, I I, I had a well, I, only, I I I can't I, I had an internship here in uh in Tallahassee and I had an internship at Brookhaven National Lab. I took Brookhaven, you know, so uh, and they paid more in Tallahassee, but the opportunity was nice here in Long Island, so I did have to decline that. Um, but grad school is another thing. There's, if you guys want to hear about grad school, like I, I've applied for several and I've received several fellowships and I can always talk about that too. You know, yeah, if you want. Yeah, I mean, I was going to ask if you could reflect back on your time at Florida State, you know, and, and not just the fellowship experiences because you were involved heavily in CRE and in other organizations, but um, if there was like one experience um, or program or opportunity that you think best prepared you for your PhD program? Um, like, what would that experience be? Um, to be, uh, well, I mean, the, I, was, I was a good student coming in, so the, the, I had all my studies, and a lot of my work was done at the engineering school. Um, I think the, the first thing was, Meeting with Emily uh, when I did my Gilman application, she um, I'm talking from like a writing perspective. Um, I was really nervous. I didn't know what to do. I I'd written I'd written first statements before, but I wasn't sure like how to apply it to like the specific application. It was for study abroad. Like I had nothing on my resume that reflected that I was an international affairs student. Like how can I you know? I'm in, and she had such a knowledge of the application, you know, that I was like you know it's 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 not about what you know, it's who you know. And because of her like guidance, I wrote like a, such a, I wrote such a good uh, essay. And I hope uh, it's, you know what, it's, it's, um, it's too late now for you guys to go, for, for me to get in trouble for this. But my brother like used almost verbatim the exact same essay I wrote and he got the deal. Man. So it was that well written. Um, and Emily helped, so like, she had like firsthand knowledge of how it needs to be written. And you know, it's like I said, it's not what you know. So, you know, like I could pour my heart out on that page, but with her guidance, you know, she hit all the spots and I got it, you know? So it's, I think uh, it showed me like, you know, it, it, you, it's, it's good to work hard, but work hard with purpose and with direction. It's very it's too much, it's, it's gonna get you far and, you know, how, having someone to point in that direction. So uh, I guess building, um, building a, uh, what's the word? Uh, relationships with people. So that, that was one thing. And then getting the Utah, like, it was, it was really, it was really big for me. Um, like it was, you get a lot of attention. Like my, I'm from Homestead, Florida, and the the newspaper from Homestead called me to like put me on in like in the newspaper back home. And those people have no idea who I am. And they called me like, hey, we want to put you in the newspaper. You know, we want to take you to dinner. And, you know, like that's never heard of me before. So it was a big deal, you know. So, it, uh, so um, 
I guess like what, what the biggest impact for, you know, making that relationship early, learning that, you know, those relationships do like benefit you, but not just being cool with like really cool people, but also help you out, you know, on things you want to get done and, um, and getting notoriety, you know, for these type of things is, you know, it, it really like uh, reaffirms, you know, your, whether or not you think you can do something. Cause there's a lot of uh, imposter syndrome, you know, when you're at Florida State, I got it at least when I was there being a non-traditional student. So uh, it's good to reaffirm. So yeah, those were big impacts on me. I think we are an office that uh, also collectively deals with imposter syndrome, and we are happy to help uh, folks navigate that. <laughs> That's crazy. Anyway, what you're talking about, um, uh, like writing these essays and um, feeling like you know, I got to impress these people. Like I got to. I was I was thinking in the back of my head for for some of these, like for Gilman, uh, CLS, and and Born coming up. Like I've served on these like review committees. Um, and like have you know selected these applicants, and I'm like, man, if they knew I was reading their essays, you would not have any stress. It's like, who the hell is this guy? You know, but <laughs> uh, but jokes aside, uh, you know, I think that is that is a really important point because like students like get into their head about this and and create this like almost like fictional student that like never that doesn't exist. You know, that has like all of those experiences, everything that a, 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 a reviewer wants to see, and it's like. Like maybe that fictional student exists somewhere, but you know, I I don't know them. But. Yeah, like which one, one, if you go to ONF, you'll meet some of those students. You realize they're super down to earth. I forget what was his name. This guy was on every like picture at Florida State. He had his name. He had a really nice smile. He had um he had the had uh that uh that insulin pump in his arm. Oh, uh, John about Wilcox. John Wilcox. This guy was I, on every single picture in at FSU. This guy was like the poster child of FSU. He was came in second place for homecoming team. Yeah, I thought this guy was like you know, this guy's super impressive. And I was his roommate at one of the conferences, and he was a super the most down to earth guy I've ever met in my life. I'm like, huh, like these people exist like in real life, you know? Because this guy was talking, he was like shaking hands with um with the president at the time, and this guy was like was yeah, but he was super down to earth, and he was part of ONF, and that's how I got to meet him. So you get to meet some of these people that look like they're super, that they are super impressive, but they are really super down to earth. And they'll, and they'll, and they'll, and they'll give you free game too. They'll, they'll tell you like, you know, what you need to do if you, if you want to know about it. Um, and yeah, so. It's really funny that you met John, because uh, he he actually came by the office about two weeks ago. And that was the first I had seen him since he was uh, since he was at Florida State. Um, but the research that like you were talking about, the insulin patch, the research that he was doing uh, through CRE and through his honors thesis, like now, because I think he graduated right around the same time as you. Um, yeah, the year after, now he's yeah. like actually created his business and is doing exactly the work that he started, like, you know, at Florida State. And it's just like, that's really cool to see. And I mean, Who same goes that? for you, you know, now working for the EPA and doing exactly what you were doing through Europe, through Idea Grants, through all these different things. And so, you know, uh, I mean, I, I'll, 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 I'll stop bragging on you because I, I could I could go on and on about it. But, you know, it's just it's really exciting to see um where these different opportunities have, have you know helped take you yeah appreciate that yeah yeah he, he won the shark tank i think for his insulin pump uh yeah the, guy, the guy's impressive man but he's super down to earth too uh, yeah that's my story <laughs> any other questions for um uh, for david in the time that we have left um but like Bonnie said, you know, we will distribute uh, this video to all the students that registered and, and posted on our YouTube channel for, for those that couldn't make it today. But um, so your question could be someone else's question that uh, they might have when they're watching this for the first time. So don't be afraid to ask. You know, um, uh, I, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. If, if you want it, um, I can send you my application to you, if you like it. Um, I, I said that you should, you should be comfortable letting people like read your work. So if you're interested in it, I can send it to you. Um, you should have it for reference. I know that, that the essay part changed, but if you want to see like what, what like my approach to it, if it helps anyway, you know, I can share it with you. Oh yeah, we'll totally take that as well. Um, we can take your name off of it too, but for future use, uh, even though it's outdated, that's probably better um, because you know I think because yeah, you can't you can't just copy it. Yeah. Right, exactly. But thank you for that. That would be very helpful.
Well, if ever if if everyone's done, if everyone feels like they've gotten uh, asked what they wanted to ask, uh, thank you all so much for attending, and uh, thank you, obviously, David, for being here with us today. This was really informative for us too. I think you know sometimes we start working on some of these applications, but we don't get to see sort of what happens afterwards or how that can affect someone um, well beyond just that process. So um, thank you so much for being here. For sure, that, 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 uh, I, I've heard the term um, or the saying to who much is given, much is expected. And you guys gave me a lot. So I'm here to give it back in any way I can. Um, so if you need anything, call me, let me know. I'd be happy to help. <laughs> And um, like we've mentioned, we'll send this um, um, to everyone that was registered so that they can access it. It'll be up on our YouTube page probably tomorrow. And um, thank you all for being here.